Today we're doing a lot of things. We're breaking glass, we're making silicone molds, and then we're combining epoxy and recycled glass to cast translucent furniture. We're going to start by making a positive prototype of the furniture piece. I'm using my Craig straight edge guide and portable cross cut to guide my circular saw to cut up a bunch of MDF so they can make a very simple but I think quite nice side table. Three quarter inch thick MDF is a smooth hard and affordable material and I like gluing it up into one and a half inch thick panels. The base is shaped like a cross and I'm just gluing and screwing these double thick panels together. My Craig pocket hole jig came in handy for screwing on the last piece of the base because otherwise I would need some really long screws. The top is just a 12 inch by 12 inch square and after checking to make sure the base was sitting nice and flat, I glued and screwed that on. I used wood putty to cover up the screws and to fill in the pocket holes. Once that had fully cured, I just sanded it down flush. I used a palm router with a roundover bit to get rid of the sharp edges. One, I like the way this looks aesthetically, and two, it's going to make it easier to remove from the mold. I wiped away all the sawdust and then I applied a thick coat of Minwax Polycrylic. The silicone mold making material will really form to every little surface texture. So once the polycrylic had cured, I sanded it with 320 grit paper and then added a second top and much smoother coat. Silicone can be an expensive product, so as much as possible I want to reduce the quantity that I need. So I cut some 4x4s and then wrap them with MDF that will fill in some of the spaces around the cross-shaped base. I'm going to screw these wood filler pieces to some plywood to create the perimeter of the silicone mold. I'm making this wood mold in two pieces and I doubled up some strips of plywood so they could use squeezy clamps to keep the mold shut. After testing the fit, I saw that I had a little bit more space to eat up to reduce the amount of silicone that I would need, and so I screwed on some half inch MDF panels to the inside of the wood mold. I cut these panels in different sizes so that I could easily tell which corner wood filler piece fits into its corresponding silicone home. I coated the inside of the wood molds with polyacrylic, no need to sand in between coats here since this is just going to be the outside, and then caulked all the seams with a basic bathroom sealant. The biggest vulnerability in this mold is in between the plywood panels, so I just added some caulk in between those joints. I hot glued this plywood box down to a piece of melamine, which just keeps it from sliding around. I want the prototype to hover about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the mold, so I screwed in some boards and some L brackets that I can use for handles so that the piece can securely hover above the bottom melamine piece. For silicone molds, I like Mold Star 30 from Smooth On. I've used this for a bunch of projects and it works well for casting everything from concrete to plaster and even epoxy. It's a two part formula with a one to one mixing ratio, which is super convenient, no math required, and I just power mixed it in a bucket. I filled the mold a little less than halfway, placed the prototype on top, and then poured additional silicone around the edges. MDF is pretty heavy as far as wood products go, but it's not as dense as the liquid silicone. And the prototype started floating up on me, so I put a couple weights on it, and then I realized I had over poured my molds just a little bit. And by a little bit, well, not really a little bit. This is unfortunate in terms of waste, but not necessarily in terms of cleanup because the silicone really peels off melamine quite easily. Once the silicone had fully cured, I used a knife and a chisel to scrape away the hot glue and caulk. Even though the silicone is thick, it definitely seeps into all the crevices and creates an airtight seal between it and the wood pieces. So I had to use my knife to trim away a little bit of the overpour and a putty knife to pry off the panels. The silicone isn't stuck to the wood, but there is a really tight seal, so I tried out my Viking arm to pull the pieces out. This is going to be a two-piece silicone mold, so I just used a sharp knife to slice it down the center. These Viking arm things are certainly not cheap. They do come in handy when you need to apply a little bit of force in tight spaces. I rinsed off the silicone and started reassembling the mold to get ready for epoxy and glass. 
This time it's the silicone seams that are going to be the weak point. So I tried out some Gorilla duct tape before screwing on melamine panels. Epoxy resins are a lot of fun and you can do some really cool projects with them, but it's not cheap. And so I really like this idea of trying to figure out a way to use broken glass as sort of an aggregate in epoxy to both create a cool visual effect and to drastically reduce the amount of epoxy needed for larger projects. This did mean that I'd have to spend some time removing labels off of beer, wine, and beverage bottles. I welded up a steel tray and I got a couple of these sifting devices that have different sized meshes in the bottom. These are typically used by prospectors. After donning some safety gear, I would break the glass bottles with a hammer. I would put this steel plate over the top so I could really kind of bang it out without the glass flying all over the place. And then I sifted it through these stackable trays, the top one of which had quarter inch holes and the bottom one had eighth inch holes. This gives me nicely sorted glass gravel in two different sizes. This was kind of a fun process. There was a great way to relieve the tedium that was experienced in cleaning off all those labels. I had a couple of blue gin bottles and I kept those separate so they would have just a little bit of broken blue glass. I scooped some broken glass into the bottom of the silicone mold, starting with the gravel that came in smaller pieces, about eighth of an inch in diameter to a quarter inch. I added some larger pieces of glass over the top of that and then started mixing up the epoxy resin. I'm using Total Boat Deep Set Fathom. It's their deepest set. For a big slab application, you can pour this up to two to three inches thick, which is really, really good. I've had great success with Total Boat Epoxies and was excited to try out this new deeper setting one. I came back into the workshop the next morning and saw, well, that my silicone mold didn't quite hold up as well as I had hoped. And there was epoxy all over the melamine and the floor. But no worries, I just used some silicone caulk to seal up all the edges and mixed and poured another batch of epoxy. So even though you're only supposed to pour this epoxy in up to three inches of depth, I had so much glass in the mold that three inches of epoxy spread amongst the glass gravel actually equated to about more like nine inches of height for the furniture piece. And what was great is that the glass acted as sort of a heat sink so the epoxy didn't get too hot, which is what tends to happen when you pour too deep. And even though I went way deeper than I was exposed to, the glass acted as a ballast that kept the epoxy from going hypothermic. I didn't see any leaks on the second pour, so I went bold for the third and final pour and filled it all the way up to the top. Now I did have some bubbles starting to form and I just removed those with my battery powered heat gun. Battery powered heat gun's super handy because you don't have to worry about the cord falling into the epoxy. I let the epoxy cure a full four to five days, and then I started the really fun task of, of scraping off the spilled epoxy so that I could actually unstick this melamine base from the floor. The epoxy worked its way through every single little microscopic crack, and my melamine side panels were definitely sticking to the wood filler pieces. The silicone, however, was great, and nothing was really sticking to it too much. Because of the first spill, I wasn't really sure how much of the epoxy had really stayed into the bottom of the mold. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that the piece was intact and quite sturdy. I scraped off the flaky pieces that sort of seeped out between the silicone seams. And then I used my palm router to route over the edges of the tabletop. I didn't put glass all the way up to the top though, so I'm only routing epoxy here. I sanded the sides with 320 grit sandpaper using my orbital sander. And then I got to test out my newest tool from Ryobi. It's an 18 volt, five inch, varial speed, dual action polisher. It's especially designed for applications like this and it's fantastic. I had done this before with kind of polishing attachments on a drill. That works, but this works way better. I'm going for kind of a sea glass finish, which is what I prefer on epoxy projects. So I just used the roughest grit of my liquid compounds and then cleaned it all off with Windex. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I really am happy with how it turned out. You can really see the difference between the smaller glass gravel and the bigger pieces. Putting the glass in before the epoxy though did result in a lot of air bubbles, which I don't mind, but I think if I wanted to get rid of those, I would probably mix the glass and epoxy together first and then add the compound 
combination into the mold. The blue from the gin bottles is really vivid. I probably should have put that blue stripe a little bit lower, and I'm not sure about the aesthetic choice of mixing it in with the top layer of glass. This was a lot of work to make one table, but I have other intentions for this silicone mold and a lot of other things I want to experiment putting into it. So stay tuned. I really want to show how an independent designer can make their own infrastructure for their own product line. And my idea is to use this one mold to make a variety of different products all at different price points. Check the links in the description and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks.